From 2008, Russia has embarked on an ambitious modernization of its armed forces. It is now newly confident and seeks to redress the unipolar political order of the world that was established when the USSR collapsed. The state armament programs initiated from 2011 were designed to reverse Russia's military stagnation and increase the share of modern equipment in the Russian ground forces to 70%. There has been considerable progress towards this goal. Nevertheless, the majority of Russia's ground forces are equipped with Soviet-era equipment that has been upgraded. Russia has adopted a new attitude towards its foreign policy, and this, combined with the modernization of thousands of armored vehicles, has once again raised the prospect of conflict in Europe. This has forced NATO to rearm after more than a decade of counterinsurgency warfare and return its attention to the potential for a conventional conflict on a scale thought improbable since the end of the Cold War. There was a period from 2008 where the Russian army appeared inefficient. The Georgian War had revealed many weaknesses in the Soviet system of warfare and the way it maintained its equipment. Following the Georgian conflict, Russia has rebuilt its capability and is able to employ considerable combined arms forces. As this footage shows, Russian battle tanks regularly participate in exercise with mechanized infantry formations and artillery. Recently, the Vostok 2018 and Zapad 2017 exercises demonstrated Russia's ability to conduct combined arms operations on a grand scale. A scale that some would argue is almost impossible for NATO to replicate, if only because it lacks the personnel to do so. Russia maintains this ability through many smaller exercises, both bi- and unilateral. For example, the recent joint exercise with India demonstrated the ability of motorized formations to counter infantry forces in an urban setting. This is a common trait of the modern battle space. Readiness is also maintained through a series of international and domestic competitions, such as the tank biathlon that is held annually. Furthermore, in 2017, Russia announced the introduction of shock troopers, a special designation given to units that are able to consistently demonstrate a high level of readiness and combat skill. One lesson from the 2008 Georgian conflict was the need for an improved logistics corps. Besides some report that Russia has occasionally struggled to maintain its forces deployed to Syria, there is some evidence that it maintains a capable conventional logistics corps. As this footage shows, Russia retains a formidable bridging capability. It is able to cross rivers en masse using heavy armoured vehicles and appears to practice this frequently. While NATO also maintains bridging units, it is understood that some of its battle tanks are too heavy to cross many bridges at anything more than a crawl. A fully upgraded Challenger 2, for example, is too heavy for many of the UK's tactical bridges. This has led to a program to find a stronger bridging system that will return operational tempo. The footage showing a T-72 deep fording across a river at a relatively high speed shows that a high tempo is still an element of armoured tactics favoured by Russian forces. One must wonder how the increasingly heavy NATO armoured forces will react to such an emphasis on speed. From a technological perspective, many analysts await with some trepidation the arrival of the T-14 Armata. The T-14 has been touted as a new generation of battle tank with many systems to which NATO equivalents have no answer. However, the T-14 is not NATO's primary concern. It is far more likely that the T-72B3, shown here during a tank competition, represents a considerable headache for NATO planners. The B3 carries a thermal camera and modern fire control system. It has proven its capabilities in Ukraine, where reports indicate that it was decisive when used against Ukrainian tanks and armoured forces. The potential threat posed by the B3 is greater than the Armata for one reason. Cost. It is estimated that a B3 upgrade costs around $1 million, which means that at least four B3s could be purchased for the cost of a single Armata, or worse, as many as 10 for the cost of a latest generation Leopard 2. With thousands of original standard T-72s in storage and in service, there is scope for Russia to deploy an enormous force of capable and effective battle tanks in a short period of time. 
If this feat is achieved, the presence of so many upgraded tanks would alter the totality of the battlefield and improve Russia's ability to successfully engage its peers. Overall, recent changes in Russia's ground forces indicate that readiness is at the highest level it has been since the end of the Cold War. A high level of military readiness is combined with a renewed attitude and a political culture that is surprisingly willing to resort to the use of force. The introduction of greater quantities of modern equipment may only embolden the Russian forces and lead to more frequent military interventions in those areas that Russia considers to be its sphere of influence.